on your feet. We're going to go to a familiar scripture, John 11 and 1. We're starting at verse 1. If you have it, say amen. If you need a minute, say hold up a minute. Hold up a minute. Hallelujah. John 1, I'm sorry, John 11 and 1. And I will be reading from the New International Version. And it says, now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It says, this Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, the sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. Verse 7, and when he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago the Jews there tried to stone you, and yet you're going back? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by this world's light. And it is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. Y'all love Jesus always talking in parables. Hallelujah, you got to understand, the Spirit will unlock the deep things of God. Amen, somebody? Hallelujah, he was talking about those who knew him and those who did it, the, those in the light and those in the dark. Come on. Hallelujah. Verse 11, after he had said this, he went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he'll get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant a natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Hallelujah. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Hallelujah. It's so interesting to me how Thomas, the one later who's going to doubt him, is the ride or die right here. Hallelujah. He's the ride or die. He said, if you're going to go and you're going to die, I'm going with you. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say amen for the reading of the hearing of the word. Uh, but we want to go back. You're going to be seated in the presence of the Lord. We want to go back real quick to verse 3. And it says, so the sister sent word to Jesus says, Lord, the one you love is sick. I need you to look at two or three people and ask them, what's love got to do with it? What's love got to do with it? Hallelujah. Now look at somebody else and tell them everything or nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. The Bible plainly tells us here in the text that Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were no strangers to Jesus. To them, Jesus was not just a miracle working passerby. Hallelujah. No, they knew Jesus firsthand. They had sat with him, they had supped with him. Listen, Mary had poured her good perfume. Somebody say, good perfume. Her good perfume. We talking about some Versace, some Dior, some Coach, her good perfume. Hallelujah. We ain't talking about that stuff out of roses that you get for five dollars. Hallelujah. Some value she poured on his feet, but she didn't stop there. They said that she wa uh, washed his feet and wiped his feet with her hair. Hallelujah. Tell somebody now that right there's some next level stuff. Hallelujah. That was some intimate stuff, right? Hallelujah. So again, Mary, Martha, 
and Lazarus were no strangers to Jesus. They were pretty sure that they were Jesus' peeps. Hallelujah. Tell somebody they knew the plug firsthand. Hallelujah. Jesus was the plug. Hallelujah. And so they felt like they knew him well enough and that he knew them well enough that if they sit for him, if they summons for him, that he'd come right away. But anybody in here knows that um, our right away and God's right away is not always in the same day or not even the same time on the clock. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So um, if the sisters hadn't figured out by day two that God's timing and their timing was different by day four, surely they should have known. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says day four, Lazarus was dead. Huh, tell somebody, I mean dead. Dead, dead. dead. Good and dead. Hallelujah. And so here comes Jesus strolling in town four days later like he was on time. Hallelujah. Y'all know anybody else always running late but with good intentions? Hallelujah. Listen, this is a true story. I had an event at my house yesterday. And so one of my nieces had said to her, well, her sister told her, our Quinn is going to be late. So Brittany says, but it's at her house. How does that happen? Um, let me tell you, it's possible. Um, because we were supposed to start at 9, but about 8.30, they got the text saying, I'm running a little late. Can we push the time back? So I have good intentions. And let me tell you, don't judge me, because it's my character flaw, and we all got them. Hallelujah, right? Listen, don't judge me. Hallelujah, because um, we all have Hallelujah, but anyway, um, Jesus knows that he can be late and right on time. Keep playing for me if you don't mind, at the same time. Um, the music always just does something to me when I'm preaching. It just keeps me in that, that space. Hallelujah, I'm sure Jesus knew that they weren't going to be happy with the immediate outcome of him being late. But can I tell you a diff a, a, a something? Jesus didn't care. Huh? Because he said, what does love have to do with it? He said, love has everything or nothing at all to do with it. Listen, and Jesus was gangster with it. He was gangster with it. Um, when Jesus was explaining to the disciples that Lazarus was asleep and that he had to go wake him, the disciples was like, well, if he's asleep, he should be good. Um, but Jesus was like, nah, players, he, he's not asleep like that. He's dead. Jesus was like, this is where I said he got gangster. He said, and for your sake, somebody, hallelujah, um, he said, for your sake, I'm glad that I wasn't there so that you may believe. Hallelujah. So not only was uh, he late, he let Lazarus die, but he was gangster with it and said that's the way it was supposed to be. So that you could understand. Hallelujah. Somebody's going to catch that in their spirit? Hallelujah. Here is what Jesus knew that Mary, Martha, the disciples, and the rest of the onlookers did not know. Jesus knew that Lazarus' death was a necessary requirement. A precursor, if you would, to his own resurrection. Lazarus' death and resurrection was to get the people's mind right and help them see in the natural what was about to happen in the spiritual. Amen, somebody. Um, Jesus, um, uh, just like Martha told Jesus, she said she realized that he was the Christ and had come to save the world. But Jesus had to do this thing in the natural because he knew on over that he was going to be dying in the flesh and he himself was going to be resurrected in the spirit. So many times God will do things in our lives more than once so that the second time around it doesn't look foreign. Here is what I love about Jesus and the Bible. What God said to me was that when we read a story in the Bible, we get to decide which character we're going to be. Huh? In the story, we get to 
decide if we're going to be Martha, the one who believed that he was the one, but had a little bit of shaky faith. Hmm? The, we could be Mary, the one who um, had poured all her all on him, who sent for him, but was a little uh, concerned when he didn't come back. See, sometimes we won't be ready and God won't be ready for us. Or sometimes God will be ready for us and we're not ready for him. It is an alignment that must happen in order for things to spiritually be ordained. Amen, somebody? And so we get to choose which characters we, we are. Here's what God also said, and I don't know that anybody would choose to be Lazarus. Because in the story, Lazarus was the one that had to die, right? But if we understand the difference with Lazarus and with Mary and Martha is there was two versions of Lazarus. Come on, somebody. Huh? There was two versions of Lazarus. One version was the one that was dead, dead. How do you, but the other version was the one that was resurrected. Hallelujah. So we can decide if in life we want to let things have us down and distraught and dead dead or if we will allow God to be the same that he was to Lazarus and resurrect him. Huh? That thing that people see you walking through that they talking about you, they laughing at you, they think that you're not going to make it through because it looks dead dead to them. But they don't know the Christ that told Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Hallelujah. I will raise the situation up. Glory to God. But you first must believe. And you have to believe without your faith wavering. What the Spirit of the Lord showed me was with Lazarus, even though he was the main character in the story and that he had to die. God said that even in death, Lazarus believed and had faith in Jesus and was strong that he was brought to life from death. I came by today to tell you that it is going to be connected to your belief and your faith if you come out. Hallelujah. If you don't have the belief pattern that's necessary to bring you from a state of death to resurrection, you're going to stay dead. The Spirit of the Lord ministered this to me, and I really didn't even want to say it, but I got to say it. But here is what the Spirit of the Lord said. Y'all ever seen the shows or the movies, The Walking Dead? Yeah. Some of us are walking around like The Walking Dead. Hallelujah. Simply because we have rested and resolved in that situation that God cannot resurrect it. But God can resurrect it if we allow him. If we are in that place, even with the faith and belief, God will resurrect it. Lazarus had hope. He had hope even in death. Hallelujah. And Lazarus understood that God had taken over the sting of death and the victory of the grave. First Thessalonians tells us that, uh, that, that God says, uh, for uh, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And it says the dead in Christ shall rise first. See, when we die with a belief that God is coming back, we too are like Lazarus. We are listening for the call. See, Lazarus had to die, and even in death, he had to be listening for the call in order to answer the call of the resurrection. Somebody's going to catch that in their spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So many times God is calling us, but we're still sitting in the same place. Can you imagine if God had called Lazarus, but he didn't move? Hallelujah. Huh? It's the same thing with us. What I don't understand is we like to read the Bible like it's a child's play story, but it is not. It is what God is telling you that your life can be if you align, if you listen, if you live the way, if you live or not live the way that the characters in the Bible did. Lazarus, when he called him, uh, what I want you to understand is Jesus could have touched Lazarus 
and pulled him out. Physically, he could have went in the grave and he could have pulled Lazarus out and Lazarus would have come. But what I need you to understand, God did not want to do that because he wanted to show that there is a call and a connection to the call of the resurrection. My Lord God, y'all listen, I had to say this. Y'all ain't acting like this is a good word up in here. Y'all sleep, this is a whole word. Hallelujah, somebody in here acting like they ain't got no dead situations in their life. Hallelujah, I know I ain't passed the witherspoon, but this is a God word. Hallelujah, y'all need to be acting like this is a God word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're talking about the resurrection and the life. Jesus, my Lord God. In this new year, y'all know I always tell you, if you want something different, you got to do something different. I always say time out for coming to church. Just the church. My Lord God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's why you got to preach that thing to yourself. Hallelujah to yourself get happy. Glory to God. Mm. I didn't been backed up in some places I shouldn't have been. Hallelujah. I didn't been resurrected. Hallelujah. I didn't been renewed. I didn't been changed. Hallelujah. I didn't been shifted. I didn't been sifted. I didn't been lifted. And the enemy didn't want me here today. But if you think that he didn't just want me here, you said they're mistaken. Let me let you in on a secret. He ain't want you here either. And when you understand that, then you will praise God a little differently. The Bible tells us that the enemy desires to sift you as wheat. Hallelujah. Death is a sifting. Hallelujah. But somewhere down in that scripture it says, but um, I have prayed for you that your faith shall not fail you. And even in death, Lazarus did not let his faith fail him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This story proves that our faith must be so spiritually strong and connected that it transcends our spiritual state to that one of divine order. The important lesson here is that our faith empowers our spirit, but not our physical man. We have things of this world that will empower our physical man. But the spirit of the Lord has to empower our spiritual man. What God said to me is the word die means to stop living. But death is the irreversible cessation. That means the close, the ending of all vital functions permanent stoppage of the heart, respiration and brain activity. I don't know if you realize this, but you can die and not be dead. Somebody gonna catch that in their spirit. Huh? You can die and not be dead. But here is what God can do. You can be dead and yet alive. My Lord God, hallelujah. You can be dead and yet alive. If you got somebody in your corner, that is the resurrection and the life. You remember I told you, you got to know who you got back in you. You got to be connected. Listen, I'm connected to the plow. Hallelujah. And the plow says that I shall live and not die. The plow says that this sickness is not unto death. When we think sickness, we think cancer. We think diabetes. We think heart attack. But our mind is sick. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that we got to renew our minds daily every day. And if your mind is keeping you separated from God, you are sick in your head. And we have to pray for God to resurrect our minds. We have to pray for God to resurrect our minds. Because that is where the connection is going to start. I imagine that when he called Lazarus forth, hallelujah, Lazarus had a desire to be uh, resurrected. Lazarus had a desire to be uh, called forth and to be functional. But the problem was, even though he got the call, he was still bound up. Mm. My, hey, God. My Lord God. My Lord God. It's somebody in here that thinks they're free, but you're still bound up. 
mm, I just came by to tell the Lazarus in here today that God has called you. But not only has he called you, when you come forth, you got to snatch the grave clothes off. Because what I need you to understand is the grave clothes ain't going to serve you well if you try to be forthcoming and sinning. you got to leave the grave clothes in the grave. You gotta leave the grave clothes in the grave. Uh, Lazarus died, but death had no victory over him. First Corinthians, as I said earlier, says, Oh death, where is your sting? Oh victory, where is your grave? I'm sorry, oh grave, where is your victory? Hallelujah. Here's what I need you to understand. When I said, what does love have to do with it? And I said everything or nothing. In the scripture, it told us, tells us when uh, Jesus finally got to Mary and Martha and to the onlookers because by this time Lazarus was dead for four days, so people had already come, start coming to the setting up. Huh? They'd already start coming to the setting up as comforters. Hallelujah, because surely after four days he's dead, right? Hallelujah. And when Jesus came there and the uh, cried out of their hearts to him and said, surely if you had been here, our brother would not be dead. See, that shows you the faith that they had in God. They knew that if he had been there, they felt in the physical that God could have kept Lazarus from dying. But God saw the onlookers. And just to prove that God is human and not just spirit, the Bible says that he wept. Huh? From their pain, he wept as well. Their pain drew a pain out of, a, a pain in him, and he cried with them. So when we say, what does love have to do with it? And we say everything, that's the everything. Love will draw you. How huh? Somebody says that love heals, love waits, love risks, love comforts, love weeps, love serves. It is everything. First Corinthians tells us uh, that we that love covers a multitude. Yes. Love can be everything. Yes. But when we think about the fact of uh, it ain't no amount of love in this world that can keep me from my purpose. Oh my, my Lord God, tell somebody what's love got to do with it. Everything, but when it comes to my purpose, it is nothing at all. My Lord God. It is nothing that you can do to keep me from my purpose. Listen, I love my baby. I love my husband. Hallelujah. But he can't keep me from my purpose. I love my pastor. Hallelujah. But they can't keep me from my purpose. I love my family. But they can't keep me from my purpose. And what Jesus was saying to Mary and Martha and all the disciples and onlookers is I love him. I really love him. But he can't keep me from my purpose because my purpose is that I'm going to the cross. And my purpose is, like Lazarus, I am going to be put in a stone and a tomb. But my purpose, but my purpose is, I, like Lazarus, will be raised from the dead. Hallelujah. The only difference in Jesus and Lazarus was that Lazarus could only resurrect himself. <laughs> Woo! Y'all ain't gonna feel that. Lazarus could only resurrect himself. But the difference about Jesus is, guess what? He resurrected you. He resurrected you. He resurrected you. He resurrected you. He resurrected. Hey, look at somebody and say he resurrected. Look at three people. He resurrected you. Glory to God. Kind of God I serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm going to close because y'all look like y'all been asleep off service. Lord God, and I'm preaching too hard. Hallelujah for people that want to be staying in the walking dead. Hallelujah. So let me, I'm moving my notes back over because I'm about to close this message up because if you ain't got it, you ain't going to get it. The last word I want to tell you is love never supersedes purpose. Hallelujah. If somebody's trying to love you out of your purpose, Cut the ties. That ain't the love 
that you want. Hallelujah. Them the ones that you gotta cut loose. Hallelujah. Because when you stand before God, you can't tell God I love them. God don't care nothing about that. God said, I called you, and I called you to a people, and I called you for a purpose, and I called you to do something. First for yourself. Hallelujah. And then for others. Hallelujah. We gotta do it different. Some of the bad habits we got in this new year, uh, let them die, let God resurrect them. Ain't nobody talking about it. Smoking, cursing, fornicating, adultery, huh? Resurrected, let them kill it. Graveyard dead and resurrection. Backbiting, gossiping. Let them kill it and resurrect it. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You ain't gonna make it in with all that mess. Listen, grace and mercy will cover us all. But if you're walking in sin and you really know it, now is the time. Now is the time. Not tomorrow, not tomorrow on the clock, but right now. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us today during our worship service. We are so grateful for your support of our ministry. If you would like to donate to Grant Hill Missionary Baptist Church, there are many ways you can give. Visit us online at www.granthillbaptist.org and click on the Donate button. You will find several options through which you can donate. You can give by using your credit card, PayPal, or Cash App. For Cash App users, please use the cash tag Grant Hill Baptist. You can also mail your donation to Grant Hill Missionary Baptist Church, 5405 Black River Road, Rembert, South Carolina, 29128. Please do not send cash through the mail. You can also bring your donation in person during our worship services on Sundays, beginning with Sunday school at 8.30 a.m. and worship service at 9 o'clock a.m. Again, thank you for your support. And may God continue to abundantly bless and keep you.